Hello, I'm Sagar Loniel, and I'm here with Blood Cancers Today, and we're going to talk a little bit about the impact of recent data on CAR T cells and how to incorporate them into your daily practice. I'm joined by two esteemed colleagues. My name is Nupur Rajay. I work at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center in Boston, and I'm really excited to be talking about the T-cell-directed therapies in multiple myeloma today. And I'm Karina Patel. I'm an associate professor at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, and CAR-T is my favorite thing. I'm not biased at all, so thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so let me, let me take you through a little bit, because I think the, the, so far we've had a pretty broad conversation. We know that there is attrition in terms of who gets into a trial. There's attrition in terms of who gets the actual product versus the people we want to give the product to. So I'm going to reverse the question a little bit and say, who wouldn't you give a car to? Yeah. So from a safety perspective, <laughs> yep. I would say, you know, it, I would give a car to pretty much all my patients. The only patient where I would be a little bit concerned about is if they're rapidly progressing mm -hmm. and I need to do something to control their disease because it is still taking us four to six weeks to get the car product. From a safety standpoint, I have no concerns. The older uh, days, we used to worry about kidney function. You know, we've done CAR T cells with uh, a significant kidney impairment and we've just dose reduced, dose adjusted or gotten rid of fludarabine completely and we've still seen efficacy. So unless and until the patient is really rapidly progressive, I would in general be able to give CARs to most. Very, very old patients and very frail patients, again, I have given cars to people in their 80s, I will say that. Uh, I haven't done 90s yet, Karina, but maybe. Um, but that would be my only yeah. folks that I wouldn't give cars to. Yeah, I think the one group that we, like anybody with dementia, um, mm -hmm. where it, it can worsen with the uh, flu sigh and everything mm -hmm. else. So those are in terms of a medical comorbidity that right. we really say we probably shouldn't do this um, or have them get neurocognitive testing, et cetera, done first. Um, but yes, I, I think there are some really frail patients um, that maybe if they can't tolerate fluids, those are the patients I probably right. wouldn't do in right. case they get CRS and I have to give them fluids. Um, but I think that I agree hundred percent for safety. If they are rapidly progressing, not just to get them to the cells and actually get their infusion because they end up with plasma cell leukemia and now we can't give it to them. But more so, I, you know, I, again, for most of my patients where I see grade three, four CRS, or if I've seen HLH, it's usually my patients that have rapidly progressing disease. Mm -hmm. Not that everybody will get it, but when I see it, it's usually in those patients, right? When there's much more disease burden. Um, so just to decrease that, the risk of that too.